Hello, it's Georgia here. Thank you for joining me. This is one of the projects for the 2021 virtual faith art retreat being run through my Facebook group, God's Refrigerator. We're going to create an album today, a little mini album with at least 12 pages so that every retreat we can actually do one of the pages in the album and what you decide to put into your album is completely up to you. You might want to stick some, you know, some some pictures or some some printed pages, something to do with the theme of the retreat. You might want to use it for something completely different. You might want to document the months of the year just in general. I'm actually going to use mine as a little scrapbooking album because I have not done any scrapbooking in such a long time. So this is going to get me back into it. And I'm actually going to scrapbook the retreat. So, because I always take you know, a, lot, a lot of really nice photos wherever we end up going. And I thought, well, I should keep a couple of them in some sort of little album and put together something from the retreat as well. I'm not sure at this point. Don't know, who knows, who knows where it will go. But I thought it would be fun and a kind of nice memory keeping activity to make a little 12 month album for 2021. So what you need to begin with is you need some either really light chipboard as in the kind that you find as the backing of paper pads and sketchbooks or if you're fortunate enough to come across packets of scrapbooking paper that have the 12 by 12 inch light chipboard in the back of them to keep the paper safe. Perfect. If you don't have anything like this, some really, really thick card will do. You could even use some food packaging material, something that's a little bit stronger than paper because this is going to be the base for your, your album cover. So you need two pieces. Now, of course, you can do these whatever size you want. If you do a different size from me, you'll have to do the maths yourself. <laughs> but the size that I'm using is it's going to be a sort of a little bit bigger than eight by eight inches. Um, so I have two eight by eight inch squares of the chipboard. So that's my front and back cover. And I have a eight by two inch piece, which will be my spine. So you'll need that to begin with. Then you will need two pieces that measure seven by nine inches. And then you need this piece to be nine inches by six inches. Now put these aside for a second. And what you're going to do is you're going to have your two covers with a spine in between. So what you'll begin with is get your piece of six by nine inch paper, which is your spine cover. And then grab your spine. Now I know I always say liquid glue, liquid glue, I'm a liquid glue girl, but today I'm actually using double-sided tape because it's a lot easier for this sort of activity. Pulling my backing off. I'm going to put it in the center, but leaving some space at the top and the bottom. As I know, I don't have very good eyes. Well, no, I have good eyes, but I have a brain problem. I laugh when I say, but it's truth. Um, I have a, a, a visual perception problem, so I very often think things are straight and they're not. Um, so, okay, so that's my center. Now, I am going to put a bit of double-sided tape. So I'm just putting two strips that I know will be within that space. Then I am going to stick that down, leaving a little gap. And the best way to do this really is to grab a little off cut of your, um, of your chipboard or cardboard, hold it along, along the edge of the piece that you've already stuck. I'm actually going to use two because one's quite thin and I want a bigger space. So hold it along there and then use that to line up your other piece so that when you lift it, you have this space right there, which is formed by this standing here. So that way, when you do, when you fold it over, 
it will actually fold easily without the pieces locking up against each other. So you do the same on the other side. Okay, now what you do is tip it over. And I did, I am actually following along to an idea that I saw on Pinterest. I can't for the life of me right now remember the name of the blog or site that it came from. But when I pause this later on, I will endeavour to remember to look it up so that later in the video, I will mention and give credit to the person whose idea I'm using here. And if I forget, I'll put it in the comments below or in the description, just so that if you think this is a marvellous idea, you can go and find this lady on the internet. I think she had a blog. I can't quite remember. Um, and you can support her by watching her other videos and liking her social media and etc etc but you know me I do like to give credit so what I do now is the part of your chipboard that's still bare putting a little bit of double-sided tape peel it off and then over the top and try and match it up as well as you can then spin it around and do the same on this side okay and what you want to do is you just want to cut those corners so cutting the corner and do that on all four sides okay now if you fold over this part here I'm using my scotch tacky glue because this dries really, really fast, so it will make this job a lot easier. So fold it over, stick it down. Do the same thing along the spine area. So make your way all the way around and there we go that's the last piece okay so what you'll have now is this will be this is the inside cover so far so you still see all the chipboard and it bends like this and here's the outside so it already looks really cute okay now moving on to the inside cover first of all grab your inside spine piece which measures six by eight inches <laughs> and that is going to cover the middle of your spine so once again I am using double-sided tape now I've only taken the backing off one side one piece of the double-sided tape so that I can align it without it sticking down just yet drop that piece and let it stick <laughs> and then I'll go in and take off the backing for the rest of them there we go and then pull this part off as well and once again that a nice crease before I commit Now the inside cover pieces, I have cut at six and a half by eight. So they're eight inches tall, which is the, the height of my book or my album and six and a half across because I'm lining them right up to the edge. And I am going to have just the tiniest little bit of overlap here just so that it covers really well. And I know this is not going to stick all the way around the edges because I'm just doing these three strips, but I actually have a thing in my mind at the moment of maybe um, doing a washi tape edging around the whole thing. That's why I'm not really concerned about the fact that this part here is not going to be sticking. 
because I actually have plans in my head for the decorating part. <laughs> okay, so I'm just lining this up. And the same on the other side. And there we go. So inside cover, outside cover. So the next thing we're going to do is make the page holding mechanism for inside our album. Now what you need is some thin cardstock, like scrapbooking cardstock, in a color that kind of coordinates with your album or with the spine of the album especially um, and I would suggest using just a plain color not a design now what you want to do is I'm actually cutting mine a little bit shorter than the actual album because I don't want the pages to be as big as the cover I want them all to be just a little bit smaller so I've cut them at seven and a half inches tall and then I have one piece which is three inches across, then another piece which is two and three quarter inches, another piece two and a half inches, and another piece two and a quarter. So starting with the largest one, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to score it at a half inch on either side. So that will fold over. And that one folds over. That one. Then I go to the next and I score that at a half inch on either side. Fold those over. So basically, these little flaps that we're folding over are the bits that you're going to stick your pages onto. And this whole thing, mechanism here as I call it, is basically your, your spine that holds the pages. So each of them, you want each of them to have that, that area that you're scoring and folding over to be the same size. So this is my largest one. No, no, that's not my largest one. I'm sorry, beg your pardon. Here's my largest one. So once I've actually folded up the side edges, my largest one is pretty much the same size as that center spine bit. And we're actually going to stick them all together and then stick them into the album, making sure you have them in the right order. I am going to use double-sided tape for this. No reason why you can't use glue. Either way will work. Once again, I'm only I'm taking off one side of the backing on one side so that I can align it before I actually commit. Take off the second one, stick them down, then go to the next one. And so on and so forth until we have all four of them lined up. Okay, so there we go. So here is our little page holding mechanism. So what I need to do now is grab my little book and I'm just going to stick this in the center and this time I am going to use my liquid glue because I do want this to be a really, really good hold. And I am just going to, while remembering that it's not quite as tall as the album, so I won't line that up right at the top or bottom. 
Okay, and I'll just put something heavy on this, even though it dries incredibly quickly. And then the last thing we have to do is just put the pages in. Okay, so now we are ready to stick in our actual pages. Now, you could use whatever kind of paper you want for this. You could actually use pattern paper if you want to. I am just using plain white, very thin card because, like I said, I'm going to treat this as a scrapbooking album, so I want my pages to be white to begin with. I'm using something called digital paper, which um, I bought this at Officeworks if you're in Australia. It's a big stationery supplier, and they come in A4 sheets, but they are a little bit thicker than paper. Thinner than scrapbooking cardstock, thicker than paper so it's you know it's very bendable and pliable but it has that little bit of strength to it so I thought that would be a really good option for my actual pages okay so eight sheets each measuring seven and a half by seven and a half inches I am once again using my glue and again I'm using the scotch glue because it dries nice and fast now I'm starting at the very back of the album the first little flap now it's up to you which side you want to stick it on you can stick it on this the bottom bit of that flap or the top but whichever you do be consistent so i'm actually going to stick mine on the top i think so just putting a bit of glue down that spine flap area getting my page on here lining it up and it's done so the next one same thing again Oops. and I'll continue until I've got all four of them on this side Now that I have those four stuck in, I'm going to do the same on the other side. So once again, sticking them on the top so that both sides match. And go through and do all four of those. Okay, so there we go. I have four pages on each side, all stuck onto these little spine sections, which gives me 16 pages to play with in my little mini album. So what I might do, or oh, something bad happened there, <laughs> but we won't look too closely. <laughs> if you don't look too closely, you don't see all the uh, muck-ups. Um, Okay, so there's a great big space in the center. So I might end up actually doing something quite dimensional in the, on the center pages because I know that I'll have all this space. Um, but we'll see what happens when that time comes. So what I might do now is actually decorate the album. Now I neglected to mention that I actually got this idea for this album from a website called sweetbiodesign.com. I will actually put the link to her site down in the comments. She's in Italy, I believe, and um, yeah, has a lot of tutorials and freebies and things on her website. So you might want to go and check it out. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to decorate the album. And the first thing I want to do is I just want to line all the outside edges with some washi tape. Now I've chosen this washi. It's not ideal, but it's the best thing that I have in my collection. So what I'm going to do is open up the album and just start on one side. And this time I'll actually cut the edges rather than tear them as I usually, usually do. Flip it over, fold it over the edge. And I'm just going to make my way all the way around my album. Oh, so this is um my washi taped book. So now all the edges are 
kind of protected. Okay, so what I want to do now is along this seam where I've got the two different patterns meeting, I wanted to put some ribbon and I've pulled out this really thick lace ribbon from Santoro Gorgeous. And I think what I might do is have a go all the way around. So I'm cutting my lace just a little bit bigger. So the actual seam part of the lace where the two ends meet up, I'm going to make sure I keep that on the inside of the album so that it doesn't show on the outside and look yucky. So all I'm going to do, and for this I'm going to use the art glitter because I know it's going to stick well with fabric. I know it's not a fabric glue, but my experience, once again, has been quite good with this glue and lace and ribbon and fabric. So then I just tip it over and do the inside as well. Then I will let that completely dry before I go on to the other side. I'll grab my wonderful paper clips, or bulldog clips I should call them, sorry. I'll put a couple at either end so they hold the edges down. I will fix this overlapping bit once it dries. So my glued on ribbon has dried. A little thing that I did is with this fine tip, I actually put some glue along the very, very edge of the place where I cut the ribbon. So once the glue dries, it hardens and it stops the ribbon from fraying. So that's a little bit of a trick. So now my cover. I don't know if I'm really happy with that washi tape actually, but it's the best that I had at the time. Now what I've done is I have grabbed my Simple Stories Faith paper pad. And you know, I was going through looking for something that I thought would be appropriate. Now this is going to be my retreat scrapbook. So I thought this, His Grace, was absolutely perfect to put on the cover because you know, it's, um, yeah, we are only here at this retreat altogether because of him, really. Um, everything that has happened from January, 2020, uh, when, you know, somebody said, hey, wish I could come along. And I was just like, hey, you know, we're both here, let's go. And from there, you know, things have gotten bigger and bigger. Every month something else happens and none of that has anything to do with me. Um, so it is only through his grace that we are here together as our little God's Refrigerator community. Um, so I thought, yeah, I thought it would be perfect. <laughs> I'll stop you <laughs> I get started, you know, I get started and off she goes. Okay, so I'm using my Distress inks in Warm Lipstick and Fossilized Amber. You're also familiar with this combination of colors because I use it so much. And I was kind of thinking when I use them together, sometimes they sort of turn into this um, orangey kind of color. And I thought, well, you know what, that's what I want because I wanted to match the, the spine. And I don't have any inks in that particular shade so I thought I know if I use the worn lipstick and the fossilized amber and I kind of maybe I'll get this out of the way I kind of use them together a little bit see then I get that sort of oranginess and bring a little bit of color in there because it's just it's just too white it's a lovely lovely card but there's just too much white on it for what I'm actually doing so I'm just bringing in a little bit of colour. You know, you don't have to do this. If inking edges is not your thing, please don't feel that you have to do the same thing. You could leave yours, whatever you're using. You might not want to use a card at all, but if you're using one, you might want to leave it exactly as it is. You might want to distress the edges or tear them. Anything, you might want to paint a border. You might not use a cut apart card like this you might want to use a die cut picture anything that you think is appropriate for the cover of your album depending on what you plan to use your album for I'm hoping you all use yours as a retreat album because I think that would be really fun take one photo every retreat of something relevant to the retreat something 
that you did or somewhere you went because we're all going everywhere aren't we <laughs> it's easy for me to say because i will be going somewhere well, hopefully we'll we'll see I'm, i don't know if i can actually still afford to go every month we'll see <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Boo she says I'm so poor but I'm definitely going this month because it's pre-booked so um so this month I will be at the Carmelite Retreat Centre in Farrowville New South Wales Australia and I will take some photos as I always do but I will particularly have in mind the theme of our retreat it's a brand new day and I'm going to get a photo of something at the retreat centre that that suits our theme I don't know what it will be yet. We'll see. Things sort of happen, don't they? And I'll get a photo and I will use that photo in my in my January January. Yes, it is January. Gosh. In on my January scrapbooking page. Okay, so I'm just putting a couple of um ink pads inside my album just to keep the cover straight. And I'm thinking of putting this here. And I'm thinking of using a few flowers and pull out a few more things. Now I thought because there's butterflies on the card, um, some butterflies would be really great. And I have one butterfly left from this Prima pack. So I think I'm going to use this butterfly. And I've also pulled out um, another pack of flowers. This is from the latest Christmas collection from Prima called Sugar Cookie Christmas. And it's really gorgeous because it has glitter, like white snowy glitter around the petals. And I kind of thought a little bit of green to go in with that aqua-ish green. Um, I now I'm not sure about this one here. I think I prefer that one. Okay, so that's kind of, kind of, I think, where I'm going with this. So I'm going to start by gluing this down. And I'm actually going to put this all the way down the bottom here. There we go. That's what I like. Like it like that. So here we go. Great big huge dab of glue underneath. Put my little butterfly over here. Lovely. And I am done. So flowers and pretty butterfly are dry. So that's the cover of my album. Now, the one other thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to paint a layer of either Mod Podge or collage medium over the entire surface on the outside and most likely on the inside as well, just to protect it, make the edges a little bit stronger. So that's it. Our little... 12 or 16 page actually but our 2021 let's call it the 2021 mini album so here we go and it has 16 pages so that is my little album um, I'm really really hope that you'll make one as well with inspiration from sweetbiodesign.com I will put her link down in down there <laughs> in the description um our little 2021 mini album so if you are in my facebook group god's refrigerator this is for the 2021 virtual faith art retreat january which is themed it's a brand new day so we're starting the year off with lots of new things um, <laughs> i keep i keep saying it don't i <laughs> some of us have a brand new journaling bible I'm very excited about it um here's a brand new album to scrap the year ahead i'll be scrapping my retreats you can use it for whatever you like thank you thank you very much for joining me and would love to see your albums when you make them so please come on over to the if you're in, at the retreat post them in the retreat event or otherwise just post them on the group page or come over to one of my social media pages or channels and tell me how you went show me a picture would love to see yours Thank you again for joining me and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.